Hello, good morning po sa inyong lahat mula po dito sa Maastricht, Netherlands. Ito po si Sastrogano Sasot. At hello po dyan, good afternoon sa Philippines. And I think good evening pa sa mga nanonood at nakikinig sa uh, United States. And welcome to session 5 of Dialogue with Sas. Itong inyong dialogue partner, Sastrogando Sasot. And for today's session, our um, topic is why should we look at the stars? So in this session, we will be talking about everything, um, everything about the cosmos, right? About stars, black holes, planets, etc. And for the, and for today's session, um, we have Dr. Roger Marie Sasse as our dialogue partner. Sandali lang ha, nagko-connect pa siya again. For today's session, we have Dr. Roger Marie Sasse, na isang Filipino astrophysicist and he is currently the um he will be talking about <laughs> Is <laughs> is task and responsibilities. He's currently the, the the chair, the department chair of the aerospace department of Ateneo de Develop um, University. Welcome yeah. to Dialogue with Sas, um, Rogel. Hi, hello. Good afternoon, Sas. Uh, good morning, Stajan. Uh, and uh, good good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all your listeners and viewers. So I'm happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> this is the second time actually that I will be talking to Yeah, Roger. that's true. That's true. Right. Because right. <laughs> the first time that I talked to Roger, he was still advocating for the space um um agency. space space agency. Yeah. But Roger, yeah. before we go to um all these um um different advocacies of yours, let's start by um informing our uh, listeners kung ano ba itong ano mo? <laughs> ano ba itong trabaho mo bilang astrophysicist? Art astrophysicist, okay. di ba? Marami siguro hindi nakakaalam. Ano ba yan? Paki-explain. Yeah, okay. Sige. Uh, siguro for, ano, for most of the listeners, when you say astrophysicist, parang ang bongga ng pakinggan, di ba? Parang wow, it's so heavy. But uh, actually, uh, the work of an astrophysicist is uh, more about understanding the nature of the universe. So parang medyo esoteric. Hindi naman esoteric, but it's uh, really about understanding uh, wh why the universe exists or how, how did it came into being, what are the different uh phenomenon na nangyayari sa universe natin and uh syempre it's both on our understanding of current physical laws and we use observations to uh, to look at the different objects in the universe so uh so it's a merging of astronomy which is more on the observation side and physics which, which is more on the theory side and a lot of people don't like uh, physics <laughs> uh, so parang, but, uh, but basically that that's astrophysics basically understanding the universe on how it uh, how it uh, evolves actually through, physics, through actually in physics the highest ano ko, um grade Wow, so, lahat ng <laughs> subjects ko oh, oh, actually favorite ako ng ano ko ng physics uh, teacher, mm. kasi ako lang ano, madali ko siyang maintindihan before. <laughs> yeah, actually, physics is fun, di ba? Uh, yun nga lang, yeah. a lot of people get turned off by the math of physics. By, uh, yeah, exactly. Really, I think by by yung math talaga yung malakas maka-turn off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kasi yung mm -hmm. interns ko nun, Roger, when it comes to physics, it's really about um, the universe. And yeah. mm -hmm. ano talaga ako eh, very... Um, Fan talaga ako ng mga um, shows about space, etc. Mm -hmm. Cosmology. Like, I really mm -hmm. love Carl Sagan. Kasi di ba si Carl mm -hmm. Sagan yes, is cosmos, cosmos, yeah. cosmologist, di ba? Yung cosmos ni Carl Sagan. Sa mga hindi po nakakakilala kay Carl Sagan, Carl Sagan is a very famous cosmologist. And he's um, known for um, yung Voyager. Alam nyo ba yung Voyager? <laughs> yung, yung dalawang um, satellite. It's yeah, one of the uh, space probes. We call them space, space probes. Probe, sorry, space so probes. Siya na, ano. na ano na siya, nakalagpas na siya ng ano natin, ng solar system natin. Yes, so, so right now it's outside of the solar system and it's uh, in, in 
we call it our space. Oh, right. tapos si Carl Sagan. So that's the job. Oh, tapos si Carl Sagan, siya yung ano, nag-asikaso nung tinatawag na Golden Disc. Tapos yung Golden Disc meron dun yung hmm. mga ano, different songs. Notes, yeah. Notes, uh, di ba? Yeah, so, Para kung mapulot siya ng, on, <laughs> ng alien civilization. Whatever, out, whatever is out there. <laughs> yeah. Kung sino man, di ba? So anyway, um, so yung cosmology ba, part ba yun ng astrophysics? Part ba yun ng... Uh, actually, when we talk about, ano, uh, the more general term siguro that we can uh, say is more uh, space science. So basically... When you say space science, it's everything that's related to space. However, may mga subdivisions din ng space science. And one of those subdivisions is uh, astronomy and astrophysics. And uh, again, within that within that subset of uh, or within that subdivision of space science, you also have different areas like cosmologists, stellar uh, astrophysicists, galactic astrophysicists, and so on. So the cosmologists, they're more about understanding the nature of the universe as a whole. Uh, kumbaga, parang, uh, how did the universe came into being and uh, what would be the eventual fate of the universe? So on the larger scale, ang work ng isang cosmologist. So that's why medyo talagang, uh, medyo talagang, minsan, even for us, uh, nahihirapan, minsan nahihirapan din kami i-grasp. Ano ba, ano ba pinag-usapan ito mga cosmologists na to? Ang, ang cosmology, <laughs> ang cosmology ba, it's very, ano, it's very um, high on theoretical physics. Actually, when when you look at, ano, the branch of astrophysics talaga, the, the foundation really is theoretical physics. So, before oh, you can okay. become a good astrophysicist, uh, you really need to have the good foundation in, in celestial me- classical mechanics or celestial mechanics in electromagnetic theory, in quantum mechanics, in statistical uh, physics, and so on. So, so talaga broad yun. Even quantum mechanics. Kasi, wow. uh, especially when you go into uh, very energetic processes, uh, like supernova events, uh, formation of uh, formation of uh, a stellar evolution, for example, in the uh, how elements are formed inside stars. So talagang, kailangan alam mo yung hindi naman kailangan na talagang in depth knowledge mo but you should have a firm grasp or understanding of these concepts kasi you never know kung saan mo gag- kung kailan mo magagamit to eh. so that's why as ang okay. basis talaga ng isang astrophysicist is from from the word itself is physics yun talaga yung foundations Sandali, ano, Roger, meron na tayong excited na listener <laughs> na magkaroon ng question si Azalea <laughs> Si Azalea, okay. <laughs> e, ano ba yan? E-I-Y. Sabi niya, may I ask Roger what telescope he uses personally? We'll follow him from now on. Oh, okay. di ba? <laughs> uh, okay. So, ako, uh, right now, I have a couple of telescopes that I use, but mainly for ano, uh, casual viewing, which I, for example, for, for friends, for public, I, I do public viewings. Uh, then every every now and then, uh, so I have uh, an eight inch telescope and an eleven inch telescope and a four inch okay. telescope. So it would depend now. Uh, when you say yung inch, it's the size of the aperture or si- the diameter of the telescope because that's how uh, one of the ways we measure uh, the power of the telescope. Uh, so it depends now on the application that I will use. If it's just casual viewing, I might use the four inch or an eight inch telescope, but it's for, if it's for imaging purposes, uh, I would use a much li- uh, larger telescope like the, like the 11 inch. And all of these, uh, well, the two of these have uh, computerized mount. So he may be manual operated. So uh, everything can be programmed uh, in a way. So yun. So, for, but for, for regular uh, viewers, uh, kung gusto nyo lang for casual viewing, uh, sometimes uh, even a four-inch telescope is suffice. So, okay. marami nang magagamit pa. Ayan, Azalea, sana nasagot ni Roger lang ano mo, ang iyong tanong. <laughs> Pero ano, gusto ko munang ano, um, tanongin si Roger, ano ba yung naging motivation me to study astrophysics? Kasi, you know, we are... F- the Philippines is not really known for STEM. Diba? Until That's now, true. diba? Can you imagine? That's true. <laughs> Until now, STEM yeah. is... A- so, hindi nakakalam ko na yung STEM, science, technology, 
Ano ba yung E? Engineering. Engineering, <laughs> engineering and mathematics. And math, diba? Engineering and yeah, mathematics. Oh. We're not really known to, uh, we're not, re- we're, we're not a country really known na nag encourage na mga, mm-hmm. na mga tao to study um, STEM-related subjects. So, ikaw, Rogel, diba? I think, ano kami ni Rogel eh, magka-age kami nito eh. Yes. <laughs> That's true. We're in the same. I think, uh, older lang ako ng one year sa'yo. <laughs> Oo. Oh, older ka lang ng one so, year. So, generation tayo. <laughs> we belong to the same generation. Oh. And, di ba, we, we, yeah, we grew up true. pa, we grew up pa na analog. Di ba, we grew yeah. up pa na analog pa ang buhay. Analog childhood tayo. Ang generation. Analog childhood, pero digital, Dig- ano. Digital adulthood. Digital, yeah, 20, so. digital adulthood. <laughs> ano nag-encourage sa'yo? What encouraged okay. you to actually study astrophysics? Okay, sa ano, okay. just give us a brief story ng trajectory ng iyong career. Sige. <laughs> Siguro ano, ah, uh... Uh, medyo unique yung sa case ko kasi parang as early as five years old I knew that my career path will be towards space kasi one of the very first books that I received when I was young was uh, an, an, a book on astronomy and a book on space flight so yung fascination ko sa space uh, nagsimula doon or nagstem from that and I think it it's similar to what a lot of people would uh, undergo. Diba? Lahat naman tayo at, at some point in our lives uh, nagiging fascinated sa stars, uh, uh, gusto yeah. maging astronaut, gusto maging astronaut, ng yeah. space, and so on. So, ang difference lang is, is sa case ko, I try to sustain it as much as possible because despite the exposure to a different field of science. So most of the time, say I'm exposed to the field of biology and botany because my mom is in that field. Pero in a way, hindi rin ako naging inter- hindi yun yung naging interest ko talaga. Kasi as early as five years old nga, uh, I knew that my career will be in, in space. Uh, when I reach high school, uh, syempre, na- nagustuhan ko yung physics. Uh, part. So parang, okay, so why not combine astronomy and physics? So that's why I went to astrophysics talaga, the field. Uh, and then, syempre, nung time na magka-college na, when I have to choose a course, eh, wala naman syempre. Ang nilang Roger astro- lah, saan ka nag-high school? Uh, sa UP Rural High School in Los Baños, Ay, Laguna. Sa Los Baños, UP, UP Rural Los Baños. Yes, so okay. it's, uh, it's under the University of the Philippines, UPLB, na uh, high school. So uh, so pagdating nung college, syempre when selecting a course, uh, wala namang astrophysics, wala namang astrophysics noon. Well, even now wala naman talaga. So I chose the course na wala up, up talaga. Now, there's there's no BS astrophysics yet. There is a BS astronomy technology in uh, RTU, uh, but most of the major universities don't have astrophysics. Uh, RTU program. as in result technology Technology. Technology, technology university yes university. and i think even wow. new era now has a new era now has a new era has a asag am in sandalila okay uh, <laughs> so new era also has a program in uh, astronomy pero other universities who don't have an don't have a degree program in that so i chose the closest that i can get to at that time which was applied physics. Okay. So, so BS applied physics in uh, UP Los Baños. Uh, so I finished when I was uh, 19. I think I when I was at the program when I was 19. I extended on one year. So okay. I should have graduated 18. So, uh, but 19 ako graduate. Uh, and then I took up my master's in, ano, in uh, UP Diliman while teaching at the same time in UP Los okay. Baños. And then uh, after my master's, uh, a year after that, I went to Japan to take up my PhD in uh, computational astrophysics in the uh, University of Tsukuba in Japan. So for those na hindi nakakaalam kung saan yung Tsukuba, since magka-generation naman tayo, yung opening scene and closing scene ng Bioman was, take, was taken <laughs> at, ano, at, at, at Tsukuba. So, so may post kami na parang Bioman post dun sa exact same location. Ano. Seriously? So, yeah, yeah, so, ano? Oh, wow. Yeah, so, so yung opening scene na nakapost silang lima sa harap dun sa introduction nila. So we, we have a similar post with my friends doon. So yun, so and then that's where I I took up uh, talaga yung, uh, yun. from then on the red direction na talaga. So there were a lot of uh, detours along the way, pero at the uh, eventually I l- never lost sight of the goal of becoming 
or taking up a career in space. So, yun, and that's that's where I am right now. Although medyo nag-shift ako in the past eight years because from science, I suddenly became involved with policy making and uh, something that normally scientists don't want to Oh, to be honest. <laughs> exactly. Kasi iba kasi yung ano, iba kasi ang work ng mga scientists and politicians. Yeah. Eh. And 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 usually kasi, you know, uh, compromising is not a known attribute ng mga scientists because scientists yes. is really about, you know, fact finding, experimenting. Uh, yes, Wala, so. Walang middle ground. Walang middle ground between <laughs> between one finding and another finding. Yeah. Diba? And, and politics is all about compromise, finding that's middle ground. True. So, mm. I understand that's why it's, you know, it's kind of hard for scientists like you to really involve Involve themselves in, in policy making. Pandali lang, and ako ang dami ng tanong, ha? Grabe. Ang dami excited sa'yo, uh, Rogel. I think kasi, ano, it's not all the time that um, Filipinos talk, can yeah. talk to oh. an astrophysicist, di ba? Gusto ko lang lang, ano, linawin, how many astrophysicists are there in the Philippines? Do you know? Uh, the last count I had is uh, parang tatlo. Tatlo ka, tatlo ka. Wow! Uh, pero I think nadagdagan na siya ng isa or dalawa. Uh, so I think okay. we're, we're, we're about five na mo, uh, as of now, siguro. So, Rogel, that's five in 100 million, ha? Five in yeah, 100 million people. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yung mga anak ninyo dyan, kaysa naman puro, ano, ano ba yung mga mahilig? Nursing, ganyan. Baka gusto niyo pag-aralin <laughs> ng astrophysics, di ba? Para madagdagan tayo, madagdagan tayo ng astrophysics. Yeah, that's true. Um, <laughs> pero ito, um, Asan ba isang, ito? Ito yung tanong ng isang listener natin, ni Janela Torrefranca, di ba? Just curious, what came before the Big Bang? Nako, Janela, okay. nakakaloka yung okay, tanong mo. <laughs> ito tayo yung mga cosmology questions. Here come the cosmology questions. Pero, pero this is, ano, di ba? Um, can, can you answer this? What's what's the latest? Uh, um, as of now, as uh, ang alam ko is wala, wala pa rin definitive ano, on what happened in the Big Bang. There are theories that say that uh, the universe uh, undergo a cycle of uh, suddenly uh, big bang and then big crunch and so on. So, yeah. parang cycle siya. So, there are theories mm -hmm. that, ano, that says that. Pero wala pang uh, definitive proof on uh, whether that really happens or not. In fact, yeah. one of the challenges talaga in, uh, in astrophysics and in cosmology is understanding the process of how did the big bang happen ba? Say, uh, exactly. especially on how we can relate it with the current uh, universe, uh, mm. especially with the four forces of nature that are currently in existence. So paano nag-merge before yun? Uh, kasi the, the energies involved with these kinds of uh, uh, processes, talagang malaki. There is this really huge amount of energy. And then from that small primeval atom or primeval object, how did the universe eventually came into being. So even that, that is one of the biggest questions in, in, in oh. astronomy, in astrophysics saka, and cosmology. Saka, saka correct me if I'm wrong, Roger, lah. Kasi Janela, yung event kasi ng Big Bang, yung, the laws of physics, physics breaks down when we, when we go hindi, back. Yes. Uh, so hindi pa, so, hindi pa ganun fully understood yung physics uh, oh. at that time. And uh, even with our most powerful telescopes, we can't, go back or we can't look back yet in time as far as the exact moment of the big bang so we, we i think in a few millions of years palang after the big bang but that's already a, a long process in uh, uh from that uh from that time so so hindi pa ganun ka powerful yung mga uh, instruments natin uh hopefully in the future we can have more powerful instruments uh that can observe the exact moment of creation so to speak Kasi di ba yan ang big, ba big bang ngayon, ang parang paradigm ngayon ng, ano, ng mga yeah. physicists in understanding how the universe came about. Meron pa tayong ano nito, version sa ating indigenous ano, astronomy. Di ba may mga indigenous ah, astronomy yes, tayo? Uh, ah, meron ka bang, meron ka mga na-pick up? Uh, uh, well, we, we usually have these uh, different uh, creation myths, mm -hmm. di ba? Uh, okay. It would depend on the different kind of, on, on the uh on the group or on the ethnic group na concern so may mga creation myths tayo pero may of course we can see some similarities in in those uh 
uh, in those uh, myths yun nga, yung like like the yung yung stars are necklaces and so on so uh, yung mga ethno astronomers natin uh, hopefully yun din that's also one area that we're advocating na sana uh, we get to be more involved with understanding the traditional uh, astronomy culture even the names for the stars uh, the traditional names for the stars that we have. meron tayong mag and kasi ang um, it's a race against time because this is the knowledge na medyo nawawala na hindi na papas on to the next generation so so yun yung isang challenge then unfortunately one of our experts uh, back in uh, on on ethno astronomy Dr. Uh, Dante Ambrosio passed away about 9 years ago so uh, hopefully there would be a lot of people who would be continuing that kind of work hey sorry naka Wala nang sumunod sa yapak ni Dr. Uh, Dr. Dante Doc Ambrosio. Uh, Dr. Dante there, there, there are there are groups that are trying to ano to to work on ethno astronomy talaga. And the good uh, one of the good things is before he passed away, uh he was able to publish his book. Uh na nandoon yung parang compilation ng mga yung, yung knowledge na nagain niya over over the and then uh yun lang kailangan lang natin ituloy kasi nga it's a race against time for ano for to for us to be able to archive this knowledge do you have a favorite ano um as astronomy related myth sa ating ano mga indigenous uh ah, culture okay uh, okay uh, siguro yung ano <laughs> uh, yung i don't know if you're familiar with yung bakunawa uh, and, and this is a common mythology na hindi lang sa Filip yes hindi lang sa Philippines but in other Asian countries uh yung myth na pag nagkakaroon ng solar eclipse uh, mm. there is a, a serpent or a dragon or a monster that is trying to gobble up the sun kaya nag nagiging dark yung sun so and then people would uh try to make noise to scare the the, the monster or the the snake or the dragon away and then oh, ano, related, to, China, naman, China. related yes, to chinese exactly. ano, so 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 merong merong ganong mythology even sa atin dito na, ano. so i think that for me that's one of the ano, kasi, our, uh, eclipse happens on a regular basis or ano, parang it's uh, something that uh, people can witness every now and then so ito yun maganda yung, ano, yung, Rogel. Maganda tong tanong, Rogel, from one of our listeners, si Deoxy GB. Hello, Dr. Rogel. I'm just curious, ano pa ang thesis dissertation ninyo during your PhD? Naku, baka, baka mag-nosebleed tayo nito, ha? Okay. Ano yan? Ano yan? Sige, so, so my specialization is actually on stellar astrophysics. So, uh, specifically on the formation of massive stars. So, okay. when you say massive stars, these are stars that are at least eight times larger than our sun. So okay. one of the issues kasi with you know, with massive stars is be, because they're very massive, they shine very bright, uh, so they emit a lot of radiation. So if we look at the conventional uh, stellar star formation process, parang it's counterintuitive na parang lagi niya kasi because of the radiation uh, coming from the from the object or protostar uh lagi niyang ini-eject yung mass na that is covering it but it needs okay. that mass to become a star so okay. the, the the question now is how does a massive star form given this kind of scenario so i used uh my my specialization is more on the computational astrophysics so okay. uh using computer simulations so our lab in japan had its own supercomputer so we use i used that supercomputer to run a program based on our understanding of radiation uh, radiative transfer, radiative transfer equations, and uh, radiation hydrodynamics. Kung paano siya nagpo-form. So basically, it uh, all the mass is being concentrated on a disk. And uh, okay. it's this disk that, uh, ito yung nagpo-provide ng mass na, that goes inside the protostar itself. Now, the problem, the second, another problem with that is everything, the, this whole process is shrouded by a cloud na hindi nakikita. And by the time... Okay the cloud dissipates the star is already evolved it's already what we call a main spin star kumbaga pinanganak na yung star so okay. so you based based on the obs because we cannot uh, 
find a way yet with the current instruments that we have to peer inside the the, the cloud uh, we mm -hmm. have to base our observations on what is externally visible on the surface of that cloud and based on those uh, okay. based on those observations uh, we try to deduce kung ano yung nangyayari sa loob so parang uh, reverse yung nangyari so i did a simulation on how the process would go and then based on the what we call the spectral energy distribution shadow technical based on malolok ada mga listeners di ba based on the graph also is based on the parameters that we can see on the outside doon na doon na lang makikita kung ano yung nangyayari sa loob nung nung star nung proto star na yun so basically that's the uh, in a in a nutshell but uh, of course the the mathematics of that is uh, I won't go into that oh, <laughs> that was years ago <laughs> Dioxy sana na intindihan mo yan na kasalanan mo yan ikaw nagtanong yan ha no. kita mo ang ano lang siguro to, to, to summarize uh, it's more it's about the firm how massive stars would form and uh -huh. the reason is because understanding the, how massive stars would form would also give us an insight on how the very first stars in the universe were formed okay because okay. these are supermassive stars so so in and, a way it's linked to cosmology then and gaano to kas mal mas malaki sa ating mga star, sa ating sun yung yung supermassive so uh anywhere from uh, at least eight times the mass of our sun eight times the mass yes. of our sun uh, since so, we are talking about stars uh Rogel, i would like to ask you um how often do you look at the stars siguro <laughs> uh, <laughs> not as often as i like <laughs> of course i would always love okay. to have uh, opportunities to do observation runs pero uh since eight years ago medyo nag, yun nga, nag shift na yung career ko more on the policy side and the uh, technological uh, technical uh on the te space technology side as well uh i try to do it as much as of as often as i am siguro once a month i i try to do uh observations uh mm. but more for my personal ano na lang yun. Kumbaga, parang just to uh, get in touch again with my original roots comes to astronomy and astrophysics. So, pero ano nung nung when you're doing your PhD, ano ba yan? Madalas kang ano to meeting in sa kalawakan. Uh, yung PhD ko kasi is uh, I used observational data. Not I I didn't. I'm not the one who personally took those observations okay but what i did is uh because it's computational astrophysics it's more okay. on numerical simulations and modeling so yun yung, yun yung ginawa ko. so uh which is i think one of the misconceptions din na pag sinabing astronomer or astrophysicist laging nakatingin sa telescope uh oh. but in reality <laughs> ang harap ko lagi is a computer and uh, lines of uh, program codes uh Sino yung madalas naggumagawa ng observation? Ito yung mga astronomers? Or... So, iba-iba. So, iba-ibang okay. groups kasi. So, uh, also, one of the problem or one of the uh, uh, issues or challenge is if you want to have access also to a big telescope, like, for example, those in Hawaii or in the Canary Islands or in South Africa, medyo pahirapan kasi, ano, uh, uh, of course, a lot, everyone in all, uh, all, everyone in the field of astronomy and astrophysics would want to have access to that. So, pahirapan siya. Uh, so, but then we also have a lot of archive data rin naman. So, ito yung, this is one of the good things with astronomy and astrophysics is that uh, a lot of the data gathered by astronomers are archived and open to the public. So, it's really a good opportunity for what we call citizen science. Na kahit, kahit high school student, they can help in classifying galaxies and so on. So, so most of the time when I was doing my PhD, ang kaharap ko talaga is actually a computer or a, a set of computers. Okay. So, so yung data mo nanggaling na to sa ano sa observations that have already been made. Tama ba yan? Tama ba yung pagkakaintindi ko, Roger? Yes. So, so merong observational data, and then you have the physics uh, theory. And then um, that's where the, the computational aspect comes in, in the middle. So to harmonize those two. So pag, mali, pag merong nakikita the observation na hindi appropriate or hindi match sa theory, then there might be a case of 
something that has to be changed in the theory, or it can be the other way around. Using the theory, we try to predict ano yung ma-observe ma dapat ng mga astronomers. So, Ito, meron tayo, yung, meron, ano? meron tayo nakakatuwang tanong, Rojo, from our, one of our listeners. Sa, tanong ni Catherine Alegado, <laughs> ang meet, ang meet, <laughs> ang meet your Ay, kuba yes. is a wishing star. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, actually, ano nga, yun yung isang misconception din na gusto kong ano, uh, i-debunk. Uh, okay. When you say a meteor, it's a shooting star, diba? Because from the way we observe it, it shoots across the sky. So parang, parang gumagana yung, yung uh -huh. star. But in reality, it's not a star. So mm. it's actually, uh, when you say a meteor, it's actually happening within our atmosphere. So these are objects like the size of a rock or size of a grain of sand that is entering our atmosphere. And because of its high speed, it uh it burns up as it enters the atmosphere and that creates that 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 trail na the meteor trail so hindi talaga siya nangyayari sa uh in in space in, the, in we we know with the stars it's actually just happening within our atmosphere hindi siya between ha, mga friends tinawag talaga. tinawag lang siyang wishing star diba na shooting star ganyan pero hindi siya yeah. ano Hindi talaga siya star. <laughs> Ang star po katulad po ng ating araw, ganyan. Yes, that's true. Oh. So, <laughs> pag naging shooting the, star po uh, yan, maloka ka na, di ba? <laughs> which brings to the to the usual na tinatanong din na ilan ba ang star sa Philippine flag? <laughs> <laughs> ilan ba? Ilan ba? Ilan ba? Uh, Ayo, it depends on friends. the <laughs> so, so sabi apat daw kasi the sun is also considered as a star. A star. Yeah. So alam niyo na yan na pag... walo daw. Walo? Bakit walo? Kasi Bakit balik walo? Balik daw yung flag. So one <laughs> side is apat, apat and then one side is another four. So kaya so... walo. <laughs> kaya walo. Grabe, na, grabe naman yung walo. Hindi ako hindi ako prepared sa walo Rogel ha. <laughs> But yeah, so so yon. So the sun is uh, actually a star. So it's the closest closest star to the Earth. Uh, ano Rogel, what is the most mind-binding feature? Mind mind bending. Sorry, mind bending feature of the universe that you know. Na talagang uh, when you think about it as an astrophysicist, na parang okay, why is this happening? <laughs> <laughs> like, it's for, really mind bending. Uh, siguro yun, uh, I I would resort to the ano, to 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 the Big Bang. Now, how can the whole universe as we see it right now come from an infinitesimally small point? When you ask, uh, so something very small, and then uh, can contain the whole universe that we see it. And then, what was the process that enabled that sudden explosion to To 14 billion years after that uh, event. So, but when we talk about objects, siguro for, for me, the most uh, mind boggling point is, uh, of course, a black hole. So black hole. A black hole, talaga, we, there are a lot of things that we don't understand with a black hole. So, so for, the, for the listeners, a black hole is actually a remnant of a dead star. So, these are the massive stars. Uh, when they die, when they become a supernova, they eventually leave, leave a remnant and depending on the size of the star, it becomes a black hole. Mm. So why is it black? Because the gravitational attraction is very strong to the point that not even light can escape it. And the fastest limit that the universe has as of now is the speed of light, which is around... 300,000 kilometers per second. Even if you fa travel as fast as that, the, the pull is so strong that you cannot escape from it. So, so for, for me, there are still a lot of things that is unknown with a, with a black, within a black hole. And uh, What happens within uh, the black hole? What no? happens and where does it eventually end up, things like that and so on. So it gains mass and so on. So, uh, so malaki pa rin yung, ano, yung, yung Kumbaga, a lot of work still needs to be done, but uh, it's one of the most interesting. And then when we talk about uh, smaller particles, for me, the most interesting is a, is a neutrino. So when you okay. say a neutrino, neutrino. Uh, mm -hmm. so this is uh, it's, it's a particle uh, that is 
basically almost invisible. Uh, meaning, in, when when you say invisible, it can be barely detected. I mean, okay. it can pass through the Earth without it interacting with any matter within the Earth. So, so, so okay. those are I know. So, so that's one of the and the, the these are uh, these are particles that are normally emitted by objects like the sun, by uh, by even black holes, by supernova events, and so on. So, uh, siguro kasi one of my earlier uh, trainings was on neutrino astrophysics. So, parang talagang fascinating ang neutrino kasi they call it the ghost particle kasi nga parang it barely ghost interacts particle. Okay. with matter. So, like. For example, our, our largest optical telescope right now is mm. around, uh, I think, 10 meters in diameter. But mm. our largest neutrino telescope is one cubic kilometer in size. Okay. So, so and that's in the Antarctic, sa, sa South Pole. So, we, we have a neutrino telescope there. So, so, yun. So, those are some of the, for me, the interesting objects that uh, Where are in mind boggling talaga <laughs> Rogel, were you excited when uh, a picture of the black hole was uh, taken yeah of, of course <laughs> I think the whole astronomy community was very excited for that because that was a first uh, definitive proof that uh, black holes really exist because previously uh, when you talk about black holes uh, it's parang circumstantial yung evidence for the black hole because we we just know it because Meron siyang companion star na nag change or it doesn't behave in the way it should behave. Uh, but then having a definitive image of a black hole means that uh, it's a proof or really proof of uh, its existence and, and its role in the in the whole universe. Pero ano, aren't you fascinated, Roger? Kasi this 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 is something that fascinates me. Kasi na um, a lot of not I'm not gonna say a lot. Like for example, the black hole. The black hole was simply um, a mathematical computation before, diba? and then and then having it and seeing it Pretty that it actually yeah. exists outside, you know, um, a mathematical com computation was kind of like really um, mysterious and uh, uh, fascinating for me. Now, mm. you know, it seems to it seems that ma our mathematic our capacity for math, you know, is um, allows us to actually perceive beyond, you know, our our normal perception. Yeah. Right? Uh, again, uh, well, when um, you can always uh, make a conjecture or make a uh, make a statement about a theory, but then for that theory to be valid, it has to be validated by. Yeah an actual observation. So so we have, uh, so siguro during that time, the um, main limitation was technology. We still okay. didn't have the technology that would enable us to observe these objects uh, because when the prediction of the whole spend, that was what, early 20th century. Uh, and uh, in the past 80 years, 100 years, a lot has progressed in the field of, in the field of uh, physics and uh, in science in general. So. It's, but then, looking at it, it's only now, just a couple of years ago, that we were able to see an actual black hole. So uh, it's actually the technology that is trying to catch up with what we can uh, perceive, uh, conceive as a theory. Uh, but then, as with science, we have to have, we need to have empirical evidence of its existence. Naman talaga. So we can postulate something that can ex something can exist, but it has to be validated by an actual observation phenomenon. Repeated validation. Ito, meron tanong ang isa nating listener. Paulit-ulit kasi siya nagtatanong eh. Si Rowan, suki ko to, suki ko tong listener na to. Mahilig ko magtanong sa mga guest eh. Tanong niya, Sir, how about dark matter and dark energy? Why is it despite all the technological advancement, we still have no idea about them? Do we, we don't we have any idea about um dark matter or dark energy? Uh, and now, our, our now with when it comes to dark matter and dark energy um di pa rin, but it's still a theory because the existence of uh of uh dark matter is uh postulated but in definitive uh definitive ano ba talaga yung dark energy or dark matter is still unknown there are a lot of candidates uh with on on kind of uh, what is really dark matter 
uh, it, which is in the same way similar to a black hole. Because, uh, for example, when yeah. we when uh, when we see a galaxy, of course we can see the light coming from a particular galaxy, but mm -hmm. then we can see also the behavior of the galaxy based on its uh, ba let's say based on its gravitational attraction or gravitational forces. But then okay. if we see that it doesn't behave in a way na nagma match dun sa number of stars na nakikita natin then something else is giving it mass okay uh, so so that that is what is being called dark matter na, dark matter uh -oh. Uh -oh. so kasi nga hindi siya <laughs> dark matter or dark energy ito ay mga ano gagagawa ng demonyo <laughs> Diba yun, so, yun yung popular misconception na dark, oh, dark energy. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, so, so it's not it's not it's not emitting anything in the visible spectrum of course. Kaya siya tinatawag na dark. So so a lot we still need to kumbaga ito, in the same way that with what happened to the black hole our technology has to catch up with you know, with with the kind of uh, uh size of telescope that is needed or the size of the experiment that will yeah. be needed to really def uh, show the existence of dark matter and dark energy. Oh. So, kasi yun mga, yung kasi ch mga, oh. challenge. Dun. Kasi mga friends, ano kasi, our eyes oh, see because of light and there are a lot of things in the universe that we cannot see because of the absence of light or hin wala, hindi sila yeah. nag-i-emit ng light, not, di ba? Not in the, not in the way length we see which is a very very Atama. narrow wavelength lang tama pala hindi wala sa wavelength ng mata natin yung light na uh, na iniimit nila kasi hmm. ma mahaba yung spectrum ng light diba may x ray yes, the whole electromagnetic we call that electromagnetic, electromagnetic so radio Ito, wave is part of it as well is radio wave part of ano the the, part of the electromagnetic spectrum yes so they are much longer uh, anywhere from a few centimeters to um, meters in, in length. Ito, meron ditong tanong, um, Roger, nagust Rogel pala, Roger, Rogel, na maganda kong pang-introduce sa next question ko sa'yo. Tanong ni Glenn Scott Frio, Doc, yung dark matter ba ay yung kaitiman na nakikita natin sa kalangitan paggabi? Hindi yan, hindi hindi dark matter yung ano, yung kaya madilim ang gabi natin. Yeah, it's not really about dark dark matter. That's that's really about uh yung yeah, because of the uh the distances coming from the stars. Um and then as we go further kasi the intensity of light becomes lower and lower. So pagdating sa atin talagang very uh, almost hindi na siya nakikita. So that's why we only see them as uh, pinpoints na lang. Oo. Ano 'yan? Mga friends, dahil wala yung araw, syempre madilim di yes, hindi hindi ganoon uh, ang liwanag. <laughs> Kasi yung, yung ilaw na pumupunta sa atin, yung napakalayo na mga between. So ito na yung tanong ko, Rogel. Kasi um, I have been a very, in, in, in a very dark places na talagang walang light pollution. Walang light pollution masyado. So, so actually, hindi talaga madilim ang gabi, mga friends. Maliwanag actually Maliwanag. ang gabi. Maliwanag siya. Hindi mo na kailangan ng flashlight ng ano in order to walk um, a path. So... Meron ba tayong mga dark um, sky reserves sa Philippines na kung saan? Ah, okay. Alam mo yon yung mga hindi po nakakaalam ng dark sky reserves, ito po yung mga um, mga places na nililimit or or pineprevent na magkaroon ng light pollution. Kasi yes. kung hindi, yung mga hindi po nakakaalam, um, sa, alam mo, pumunta kayo ng street, di ba? Karamihan ng mga ilaw dyan, yung ilaw na iniimit nila papunta sa taas. So ang nangyayari, iniilawan nila yung taas. Dumidilim ngayon yung kalang yung 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 sky natin imbes na ano ba tawag diyan? 'Di ba yung parang it it cancels out the light na na hmm. na dumarating from, from the na, na, na overshadow nung ano nung light nung light uh, artificial light yung ano uh, so for oh, here, here sa atin, officially, we don't have a dark sky reserve here as much okay. as we want to. Okay. Uh, but there are areas in the country naman na siguro dahil na lang din sa isolation or 
uh, hindi pa masyadong developed yung area, uh, in a way, they function as uh, areas where you can really see the night sky. So some of these are like in areas in one of the best night skies that I've seen was in Palawan, uh, in the southern part of Palawan. Talaga. Kasi uh, sobrang dark. And then uh, also even in Mindanao, there are areas in Mindanao uh, where where I am uh, na, na talagang, talagang dark sky, considered siya as a dark sky talaga. Uh, and then when you go in the middle of the sea, like for example, okay. if you go in the middle of, uh, of what? Sulu Sea. So if you go okay. to the area of Cagayan, Silio, to Bataha, mm. there is nothing for kilometer, for hundreds of kilometers in either direction. Then that, you would really have a very good enough. So hopefully in the future, uh, yun nga, magkaroon tayo ng at least kahit isa man lang na dark sky reserve and a radio quiet zone. So so yun yung, oh, oh, oh. Uh, yung radio quiet zone naman kasi, uh, this is an area wherein bawal ang radio transmissions. Bakit, bakit importante siya? Kasi alam naman natin na ang Pilipinas is nasa isang tropical, and we're a tropical country, we're in the tropical region. And then Correct. half of the year, or more than half of the year, we have cloudy weather. So walang Correct. masyadong benefit ang optical uh, astronomy. And other okay. than, other than uh, of course, it's very good uh, material for public PR, for, for promoting science to the public. Kasi nga, magaganda yung images, magaganda yung pictures yes. na nakukuha. But then, when you look at it from a, from a scientific perspective, on the practicality, medyo hindi practical na magkaroon tayo ng malaking telescope in the same way that Hawaii or Canary Islands and other areas in and Chile. With him. Kasi nga, half of the, more than half of the year, hindi mo siya magagamit. Kasi, ah, kasi we're ano, cloudy oh, and cloudy oh, now, yeah, diba? Yeah, oh, yeah. Diba? We're, we're typhoon central. <laughs> so, so uh, masasayang lang siya. But then, when you go to radio astronomy, it doesn't really matter if it's cloudy or not. You can still do the observation. Okay. So, so kahit daytime, kahit nighttime, whether it's sunny or cloudy or or uh, well, or fair weather, you can do the observation. That's why uh, I think for the Philippines, the much much better option or route that we would we should take is more on the radio astronomy side. Because it, and that's why the okay. having a radio quiet zone is uh, very important. I, I've been to one radio quiet zone in the U.S. before. Talagang bawal. Anong meron, sa, <laughs> anong meron sa radio quiet zone? So um, when you say radio quiet zone, monitored lahat ng transmissions uh, or lahat okay. ng emissions. So so devices bawal like uh, several kilometers, two kilometers from the telescope itself. Bawal kang magdala ng cell phone or anything. Kasi ganon ah, ka sensitive okay. yung ano. Uh, even even wireless, ano, wireless mouse or wireless keyboards, <laughs> hindi rin pwede. And then they regularly monitor uh, the area and then try to track kung nasan yung nagkakaroon ng emissions because it can really mess up the, the, the observation done by scientists. So this was in West Virginia uh, years and years ago. <laughs> ano ano? Kasi di ba, we, we have several... Uh, uh, large telescopes scattered all over the world. Anong ano anong anong batayan kung saan nila nilalagay yan, Rogel? Is mm. it uh, the um height ng ng lugar, is it uh, weather, weather pattern? Anong um uh, ang main anong, basis, anong logic ng talaga. ng distribution kung saan nila nilalagay? Oo. Oh. Oh. Ang main basis is uh yung seeing conditions. It has to have a very good seeing condition in order for okay. scientists to maximize the utilization. So, uh, like in Hawaii or in Chile, in the Ataka, mm. in, in the mountains of Chile, most of these locations are located above 4,000 meters. Because uh, when you go at that height or at that uh, altitude, you're already above the cloud layer. So, mm-hmm. mas, uh, mas uh, higher na yung... And then the, the, the air there is much uh, cleaner. It's not as turbulent as the air down and uh, down on the uh, sea level. So, mas clear yung nagiging seeing condition. So, that's why astronomers would, would build as, uh, observatories in high locations in mountains. Okay. Atop, on, on top of mountains. Kasi mas maganda yung seeing conditions. And then if you... Go high enough, 
in some cases you can pick certain bands of uh, non-visible light like infrared for example they can uh, pass uh, on certain wave- wavelengths of uh, infrared kaya siyang makuha pero uh, basically it's really just about having a good seeing condition and then uh, making sure that for more than half of the year a usable you have clear nights na usable yung telescope Okay, yung pala yan. Kasi di ba parang, mm-hmm. ako kasi niisip ko, may politics kayang involved dito. Kaya 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 yung iba merong, yung ibang um, lugar, merong large telescopes, yung ibang wala. Yung pala, ano siya, meron it, it, talaga. Yes, there, there's, there's, there's a reason why it's, ano. Pero yun nga, in some cases, it becomes in conflict with the local uh mm, local yeah. populace like what's happening in Hawaii. May, may some, may, may iba na nasasabi na hindi na dapat tinatayo ng telescope because Mauna Kea is a sacred mountain for Hawaiians and so uh, things like so that. So, mer- so mer- may ganun. Ano, ng indigenous yeah, uh, um, mm. uh, ancestral domain um, angle. Yeah. Mm. Uh, for us here naman in the Philippines, we don't really have a lot of high mountains talaga. Uh, mm. our, our highest mountain is, is Mount Apo, which is almost what three kilometers long. So, but we have good areas, good areas, naman for us. So, okay. investing in a big telescope might not be very practical for the Philippines, but investing in a radio telescope is would make a lot more sense. Ang tanong ko, Rogel, ganito, kasi di ba, syempre, sabi mo ngayon hindi ka na madalas na tumitingin sa kalawakan through your telescope, pero before, right? Siyempre, before tumitingin ka, yes. especially when you were um, studying, when you're doing PhD, when you were still not involved in policy making, what's the most beautiful object in the universe that you have seen through your telescope? Um, siguro two things. For for me, it's, okay. it's two. Uh, one is a total solar eclipse. Although you, total uh, solar eclipse, okay. Yeah, so it's a, uh, yun talagang, Iba yung experience. If if you're familiar with the move, uh, series, yung Heroes, di ba? Yung opening scene ng Heroes. Yeah. Di ba? Yeah. Yung Eclipse. Ganun talaga yung nangyayari. So, okay. pero iba talaga yung experience ng isang total solar eclipse. Uh, okay. And then for me, for uh, something smaller and uh, something more common, for some reason, I'm very fascinated with Jupiter. Kasi, okay. uh, a lot of people will be fascinated with Saturn because of the rings. For me, I, because of <laughs> kasi nga, ang ganda ng rings, di ba? But for yeah. me, person, Jupiter talaga is really fascinating because you can see the four Galilean moons okay. of Jupiter. And then, after a few hours, uh, mag-iiba na yung position nila. Because it's, uh, makikita mo, uh, sometimes, apat nakikita mo. It's, minsan, dalawa lang. Yung, okay. Yung, yung, depending on the rotation. So, so it's a very dynamic, uh, object na in even in just a matter of hours a lot can change in that ano in, in when you observe jupiter so so talagang ah, iba iba okay. yung feeling pag for for me iba yung feeling na pag nakatingin ka sa jupiter through a telescope uh yes. ma, ma, mo na parang, okay the and then you have a, a galaxy basically any galaxy when you look through a telescope you would really feel small in a way because okay. they uh, look at, at it in a, from from let's say for, for an, from the naked eye parang isang dot lang siya but then yes uh, <laughs> when you look at it through a telescope you would see that it's really not a dot but it, it has a definitive structure and then this small thing that you can see through a telescope contains actually billions and billions of stars. I know that that's and actually I know. it's much larger than our own galaxy. So parang exactly. so so parang nagkakaroon ka ng moment na parang okay, so anong 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 place then sa sa <laughs> in the grand scheme of things of the universe. Uh, I know. Sense. So ganun talaga. So you siguro that's one of the good things with uh with astronomy and astrophysics. It's one of the few sciences that the public is, is very relatable to the public, whether mm. you're young or old. It's something that we can, uh, people can relate to, and that's why yeah. we, we should promote it more. Exactly, pero ano, it it does inspire humility, no? If you if you, sure. I can Im- I I can already imagine, because the first time that I have been in a very dark 
um, place wherein you can see the, the night sky in its splendor and magnificence. The first time that I saw, um, what's this? The the Milky Way, na very Milky clear. Way. Yeah. yeah, I was like, oh my, like, <laughs> you know, it's 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 very. Um, you know, it inspires so awe. inspiring. Oh, yeah. inspiring and I know inspires humility. Na parang this yeah. is just so magnificent. Um, meron meron dito isang nagtatanong. Um, asa na ba yon? It's about ano eh? Um, Elon Musk, Musk, and <laughs> okay. whether we 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 can harness um interstellar energy, something like that. I ang nawala nawala ne pero. Do you, do you see any prospect there? Yung harnessing um, interstellar energy. Is it interstellar energy or something? Uh, well, I know. There are, there are ano naman, as of now kasi, yun nga, uh, our technology is not yet in that. Uh, our technology is not yet, uh, and I, I don't really understand what, what means interstellar energy energy coming from the stars which is basically solar energy so so it's a matter of uh our technology catching up to become make it more efficient there are uh plan or there are i think projects or uh, endeavors right now you know making what we call solar sail so ito, these are yeah. objects that use the uh, radiation pressure coming from the radiation coming from the sun to propel an object uh, faster than we can normally do with conventional propulsion so again it's the technology that is still not up to speed there's yeah. even theories before na in in some uh ano to? in some I wouldn't say alien or, or alien civilization na in Dyson sphere na parang some of the objects that re- lose, let's say, luminosity kasi nga, naka-harness yung ano. Pero yung yeah. in the same sense that sa Star Wars, diba, ginawa nila yun in one of the recent Star Wars movie yeah. na yes. in-harness yung yes. energy ng, ng, ng sang star to to make a weapon hindi pa wala pa sa ganung stage malayo oh, pa masyado ng ano yan masyado masyado ng advanced yang technology na yan <laughs> pero, pero pero we are already harnessing stellar energy our bodies it, are harnessing yes. stellar our, energy our plants, plants. So doing yeah. that diba so to yeah, do I it think... efficiently that's that's the challenge and to do it in outer space is also the, another challenge yeah and i think the challenge is how to turn um what's this inorganic uh, how can inorganic matter, you know, harness the energy of the sun, right? How can our mm. technology harness the e- technology, stellar energy, just like, let's say, plants yeah. so, harness so, stellar energy? <laughs> so, parang solar cell natin, it's an or- inorganic material, di ba? But then it, yeah. can create, you know, it can create energy using the actually, light coming from the sun. Yeah, actually, one of the I think I've read this before. Now, one of the latest technologies of solar cells is like they are trying to mimic um, photosynthesis mm. of how of how leaves actually will actually um, do the process um, of, know, of photosynthesis. Yes, yeah, exactly. Uh, so, so pero yung nga wala hindi pa ganon. We we can do those things in big devices, pa. Diba? Kaya nga mga solar panel natin malalaki pa rin. So, so increasing right. the efficiency is one of the challenges. Uh-huh. Ito na, Roger, mag one hour na tayo. So, ito na. <laughs> okay. <laughs> ang bilis ha. Bilis, ha? bilis, ha? bilis ha? Oh. Oh, Masarap kasi ang kwentuhan, di ba? Um, ito na ang ano ko, final question. Um, what do you think is the future of the field of astrophysics, field of astrophysics in the Philippines? And what can you say to motivate Let's say you know our listeners, mm. na you know at least na encouraging children nila to be um, to read more about science and to be interested more in in, in science. Mm. Okay. So for astrophysics, uh, we're we're actually in the stage right now na a lot of things are happening, especially with the with the new Republic Act one one three six three, the Philippine Space Act. Uh, so for the field of astrophysics, uh, it's I think it will it will remain 
uh, as it will remain hindi siya ma hindi siya ma, mawala kasi it's really about understanding the universe understanding uh, how the universe works and in a way using that knowledge to something that we can harness or we can utilize here on earth so yun naman ang one of the challenges with not just astrophysics but space science in general so uh, it's a one of the emerging fields uh, for us especially when we start looking into not just on the astrophysics side but also on the space technology side if we want to go into let's say develop rockets that would eventually uh send objects to space then that's another story altogether <laughs> yes uh, but then uh yun nga, it's what is a very interesting field and it's uh, uh as i mentioned earlier one of the foundations talaga nito is physics so so despite not having uh, explicit programs in astrophysics or astronomy here in the country. Uh, physics is good enough foundation for that, and uh, even mm. courses like uh, other areas like aerospace engineering, for example. Shempre, <laughs> from, I come from Ateneo de Davao, so which which is one of the few universities that offer aerospace engineering. So hopefully, we have more and more uh, of the younger generation uh, that would really go into this field. Uh, but then that doesn't even that doesn't preclude the general public into joining the field of astronomy and astrophysics. Correct. Yeah, it's a it's it's one of the few areas of science that wherein ordinary citizens can actually contribute a lot and significantly to the to the field. So citizen science is also so kahit casual lang kayo hindi kayo masyadong kagalingan sa math, uh, may, meron pa rin kayo mako contribute. Uh, yeah, whether it's malay yung discover kayo ng ano. That's true. Uh, uh, most of the uh, panibagong star system, kakatingin niyo sa uh, mga ganun. Most yeah, of the comets correct. are actually uh, actually discovered by uh, amateur astronomers. So, okay. to, hopefully this is something that will continue in the future, especially mm. with the development of the field of uh, space science here in the country. Yeah. Uh, so for those na no, yun nga ang, ang sinasabi ko lang naman, is kailangan Meron lang talagang pa, a PhD, but this is not the PhD that uh, <laughs> usually uh, for those aspiring astrophysicists, uh, it's passion, hard work, and determination uh, to I go know. into this field. It's uh, challenging, shop, but at the same time, it's also a very exciting field, and a lot can a lot of things can be learned, and there are still a lot more things that needs to be learned and to understand about the universe. Ayan, maraming maraming salamat, uh, Rogel, for Thank joining you, <laughs> this session ng ating dialogue with us. And, and hopefully, I will be able to talk to you again. Maybe there will be new developments in, yeah, in astrophysics oh. in the Philippines, di ba? So good oh, luck. Especially on the space science side. That's exactly. That's the issue yun. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Pag, pag, pa lang tayo sa looking up eh. Wala pa tayo sa looking down. On Wala pa tayo sa looking down. Di ba? Pag oh. dumating na tayo, pag, pag umusad na ng, ng magandang maganda yung ano, space, um, what is it called? Space department, di ba? Um, space agency. Space agency ng yeah. Pilipinas. So maraming oh. salamat again, Roger Marisa. And thank you so much to all those who listen to this episode of um, Dialogue with Sass. Thank you, Rogel. Bye. Thank you, Sass. Thank you, everyone.